Okay guys, welcome back to uh, another episode of our Space Hopper game. Today we are going to be carrying on, carrying on working on our leaderboard. Uh, in the previous episode we started... What did we do? We started instantiating entries into uh, our actual leaderboard. I think we added 10 or... I think it might have been a little bit more, maybe about 13. Uh, but today we are going to be working on... What are we doing? We're going to be working on the UI in the game after you end the game so when you've ended the game or you've fallen off the platform and you've reached the bottom of the scene and it triggers the death of the player i guess um it is going to then call up a panel that is going to allow you to enter your name and your score into the leaderboard so that's what we're going to be working on today so let us jump straight into our game here Right where we left off yesterday, let's just go and play the game and see if everything is still working how it was. Uh, it seems to be fine, but let's get rid of that and then play this again just to make sure. Okay, so those errors were, I don't know what they were from, but it seems to be working fine now. We have our game, it is playing well, or I think it is. Let's just zoom out. So yeah, there's our game. Uh, at the moment our back button doesn't do anything, but I think we'll go ahead and... Let's just go ahead and sort that out now quickly. So, let us jump into here. Uh, we are going to add a new empty object onto our, into our hierarchy here, and then we need to add a script onto this called... Um, oh, well, let's just call this manager for now. And then on here, we will call this... What are we going to call it? We're going to, in here, we're, so we're going to put our... It's, I think it's just going to be your back button, yeah. Because I don't think there's going to be any other button. So in here we'll say um, leaderboard leaderboard manager. So I'll go ahead and create that new script, and then we will go and add well, not properties. We will cancel that, uh, and then we will open it up by pressing edit script. Okay, so now we can get rid of these because we don't need those. We only need to have our uh, scene management. So let's go and say using uh, Unity. I think it's Unity Engine dot scene management. Yeah, there it is. So in here, the only thing we want is a public method. Public void. I think I can't remember how to do this. Public void. I think it is. And then we'll say back. Yeah, just back for now. Um, and that's all we want. And then in here, we want to go scene manager dot load scene for now. I think, what is that main scene called? Let's go ahead and check. Sample scene. Okay, so let's rename this to game scene. And then we'll jump back here. And then in here, we can just type game scene. So whenever we press our back button, we're going to call this method. Uh, that's gonna pop us back into the game for now. We might change that and add in like a main menu theme uh, scene so that that pushes you back onto the main menu. But for now, let's go ahead and um, make this work. Let's go and attach it to our button. So on our hierarchy, we will go to our panel uh, and our leaderboard, here's our back button, so in the inspector we should be able to add an on-click event here, and then we can drag in our manager so we get access to that script, so let's go leaderboard manager, and we'll select the back method, cool. So if we play the game, now whenever we press our back button here, we should be sent back to the game, which we are, so that's good, that's working nicely. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start working on our what's called our input UI leaderboard input UI so let's go to our game scene and then over here we are going to go onto our hierarchy and then we need to add another panel in our canvas uh, and then at the start of the game we are just going to disable it so you can't see it just the same way we do to this panel whenever we press play we go ahead and disable it uh, whenever the game pauses we go and enable it so we're going to do that we're going to do the same thing to our what's it going to be called our leaderboard panel enter info yeah, i don't know what it's called anyway um 
So on our canvas, let's go and create a new 2D object, a uh, UI object, it's going to be a panel. We will call this um, start panel, leaderboard, input panel, yeah, leaderboard, let's go leaderboard, leaderboard, input, input panel, cool. So on here, we, for now, I'm just going to make this completely black so that we can't see anything that's behind it. In other words, the game. So, we'll scale that down just so we can work in our scene. And now we want to somehow create an input field or um, what's it called, input form uh, that will allow us to enter our name and then press a button and that's going to submit the, the name as, as along with your high school. So we only really need to have two things, an input field and a button. So let's go and create a new UI what is it? input field. So this is going to be called name input. And then I am go let's go ahead and style this a little bit for now. We'll make this a bit bigger, like that probably. Uh, yeah, you can, you can. That should be big enough to type in. I think. Let's go ahead and make the text area, or rather, our placeholder and our text the same size. So let's go make it probably like 25, maybe, or we'll make that bigger. Let's say about 30. We'll make it bold and we'll center it horizontally and vertically like that. And then let's just see. So do you know that should be fine? Could probably make it a little bit bigger. Let's try 35. Cool, yeah, that should be fine. Uh, and then what we want to do, let's say, I'm just going to leave it white for now, just because we're not really focusing on the styling part of it, rather than just getting it to work first. And then when that's done, we'll go ahead and work on making things look nice. So uh, the next thing we want is we want, uh, or under our leaderboard panel, we want to create a new button. So where's the button? The button's over there. So let's go and make this. Well, first of all, let's go and move it down a bit. Probably over here. And then the same thing. We can go and make this a little bigger. So we'll drag this up like that. We'll place this in the middle at the bottom somewhere. And then for our text, we can also make that bold. And then we can change the well, size of it over here to about 30, I think. And then we can change the text in it to submit. Or submit or save. Let's go with save for now. Uh, and then we could. Uh, I'm just going to change the color of the image because I don't really like it. So for now, I'm going to make it white and then I'm going to make the text white. Actually, black. Actually, red. I don't know. We'll leave it black for now. Um, Actually, you know what, let's keep it with the theme of the game. So let's make this a bluish color like that, just for now. And then for our text, because our blue is kind of dark, we'll make the text white. And then we will probably, let's just do the same with the nav, name input. So text area, what is it, input. Rather, we will make this like a lighter blue, I think. That probably. Or do you want to make it dark? We'll make it like that. Um, and then our text area, the placeholder, and the text will stay white, both of them. So that when we type and we press play, we can type in here. Uh, okay, clearly we cannot type in there for some reason. Okay, we can type in there, you just can't get rid of the placeholder. So uh, let's type in Gino, you know, it's going to look the same. But anyway, let's go and change the placeholder from my name to name. And then I want to I want to change the color of it to slightly less bright. So we'll change the opacity, bring it down a bit so you can kind of see the blue coming through it, make it a little bit brighter. Um, and then what else do we need? I think that's pretty much it for our input field. So what we need to do now is we actually need to attach a script onto this. So let's create a new empty object. If I can do it, create empty. 
And then here we will say input manager. And then on here we will add in a input manager script. And then we will go ahead and open that up. So here we need reference to our text field as well as our button. So let's go and say serialize field uh, private. This is going to be a button, I think it is. For that, we need to import our UI, so dot UI. So this should work now, so button, like that. And then this will be our save button. Same thing for our input. This needs to be input field, I think it is. So name uh, input field that I think um, we'll see if that works we might have to change that to input uh, and then what we want to do is we want to get rid of these I think I don't think we need them yet or at least for now so what we want to do is whenever we type in a name and press save we want to go ahead and get that name from uh, we'll get the text from the name input field and save it into our payer preferences or in our case I think we're gonna be using a JSON file so for here, let's go and say public, or yeah, public, because we need to access this from the inspector. Public void uh, save. That is going to be the method to save whenever we press the save button. And then in here, we need to first of all get name from input, and then we also need to save the name into. JSON. So for now, uh, let's go ahead and get the name from our input. So all we have to do is say input, or rather, let's, yeah, let's go and say input. This all. Let's say uh, string name is is equal to uh, name input field dot text just like that. So that should get the name from the input field. So what I'm going to do to see if that actually works is, okay, hold on, my camera's gone for some reason. Let's just fix this quick. Sorry about that. Two seconds. I am looking for the better day. You seem like uh, it's coming back. So okay, there we go. Okay, we're back. So, where were we? Yeah, so we're gonna try it. Before we save the name, we're actually just gonna print it out in the console to see if it actually works. So, debug.log, uh, and then let's print out our name. So, we'll save that and go back here. So now we just need to attach a few things to our button so that they actually recognize that we want to use the script on it. So for our input manager, we need to drag in these, what's it called, these uh, references. So let's go and drag those in. So uh, input text area is not gonna work, okay. So rather we need to put our, what is, what is it called? we need to drag in our name input. So on our input manager, let's drag in our, input manager okay we'll drag in our button first so we'll drag our button into our save there that works then for our name input field let's drag in our name why is it not selected name input okay, it is selected okay so that's not working so let's, let's try something else let's try in uh, okay, so hold on, let's, let's, we might have to use some text match pro thing, so let's see, let's input, uh, let's go and say using text match pro, and then in here we'll say input, input field, I think. Uh, then we will save it as name input field. Same thing, so we don't have to change that. Name input field, like that, we'll save that. So that should work now. And then we should be able to drag and drop our input field into there. 
if we drag that in there, there we go. So we can drag that in now, and now that should work. It should use those two references. So now what's left is we need to go onto our button here and add in an on-click event. And on our input manager, when we drag that in, we should get access to our input manager script on there, and we can use the save method on there. So let's go and play the game. And now we should be able to type our name. So if I type my name and press save, we now get uh, an input. We now get a, a console log of the text that was put into the text field. So if I go and type in max and so press save, we get max printed out. So cool, that's working. So now what we have to do is, what's the time? 15 minutes, okay. So now what we have to do is instead of printing out this name, we rather need to save it into our JSON file, but we're not going to do that in our input manager. We are going to send this name as well as the score of the player uh, to a function in our save manager script, which we have not created yet, uh, but we will do. But for now, let's go and see what we can do here. So. I am going to make a reference over here to our score. So actually, do we have, we have a global? Yeah, global. Okay, so we have a score. So let's let's try something quick. So where's our um, what's it called? input manager? Input manager is here. Can we drag these into here? Cool. So I'm gonna do this quick. So here I'm going to say global. Uh, what is it? Actually, we don't need to do that. Let's just say uh, debug dot log, and then I'm going to say name. Rather, I'm going to say this um, name class name. score and that should give us access to what am I doing here I haven't done so well so let's go and say score and then we will put these in brackets like this and then the same thing here like that so that is going. That should print out our score as well, our name as well as the score of that player. But obviously, uh, it should print out zero because we haven't yet played the game. Because if we play the game now, it uh, takes us straight to the input field. So let's go and say my name and save. So name is you know and plus score is um, zero. Cool. So. Uh, what we want to do is let's try and get the score working so that we can see uh, that it actually works. So what we want to do is we at, at the start of the game let's go first of all, let's get our gameplay mode. So at the start of the game we want our leaderboard panel or input thing to be disabled like this so that we can actually play the game. And then whenever we die or out of bounds script. So whenever we die we want to present the leaderboard uh, input field scene panel whatever it's called so let's see restart the game time scale equal zero game pause equal true okay so in here we want to go and set uh, leaderboard panel to active so we need to go and find this so let's go and say game Object dot find find and then we'll for now we'll just use the name so find it is called leaderboard panel input so I'm just gonna copy that so I don't misspell it so it has to be exactly the same leaderboard panel and then here we're gonna say set active to true okay so. Uh, 
and then I am going to get rid of the restart game over here. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to cut that out because we don't want the game to restart straight away because we want time to be we want to give the player time to actually input the name. So let's go and try this out and see if our input manager actually um, gets displayed on the scene. So let's play this a bit so we have some score. We also need to fix that. Um, so let's see, we got five, let's get a bit more. Let's try and get that satellite and then we'll die. Okay, so 13, we got 13, so it died. Okay, so we need to do something here. So out of bounds. Line 18 of out of bounds. Okay, so line 18 over here. Okay, so it's not finding our leaderboard panel. So let's try and figure out why. So what we need to do is we need to try and figure out why it's not finding this. The so game is paused, yeah. Um, Let's do this dot name and here we'll say debug debug.log So we shall save that and then jump back into the game here and see if we get anything printed out. So let's play the game. I'm just gonna let the astronaut run straight off so we don't. Okay, so let's see, game over trigger. Okay, so. Okay, so clearly this is not working, but out of bounds script is attached to. Where's our scene? Let's zoom into here and see. Okay, so I think it's attached to out of bounds, out of bounds script. Okay, so we could probably, I think. Let's try this. Let's make a reference here and say serialize field and we can drag this in. So private private game object uh, leaderboard input input panel. And then instead of finding it, we will simply say Leaderboard input panel dot set active to true like that. So let's go and drag that into here. We should be able to see that reference over here now. There it is. So we can simply drag that in there and let's see if that works. Hopefully it does because that will give us access to our input field. So let's just well, there we go. So that does work and you can see that it doesn't restart the game. Okay. See the game's ball. So here we can go and input our name, you know, and save that. Cool, so score is zero. So let's go ahead and do this again, but this time in our input manager, wherever this is over here, we okay, so that's fine. Let's just go and play this again and see if we play the game a little bit and see if we can get some score and see if that actually passes the score onto or into our input. Field manager, whatever it's called. Why all of these breaking? Okay, so let's try this again. So let's go, you know. So that should give us a score of six, I think. So there we go. We've got our score of six. So I've got a score of six. So now the next step is to simply take that information, the name and the score, and submit it into a JSON file. And that is what we are going to be working on in the next episode so we will be working on creating a json file from scratch and saving it somewhere onto your system uh, and then we will also add these values into that json file but then we will also try and order them so that they are in order from the highest score to the lowest score so that we can rank them from first to i think it was 13th in our leaderboard uh, when displaying all of them 
but I think now that that is working, uh, we will end this, this video here and we will continue the next one, obviously. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.